And we're talking about drinking on an empty stomach and other drinking habits. Well, he's a former addict who now leads a faith-based recovery program called From Beer to the Bible. He's also had a lucrative career climbing the ladder at Fortune 500 companies, but he was fighting a battle that really nobody really knew of. His inner demons were slowly destroying him. His name is Irvin Lee. He joins the wake-up call now. Irvin, good morning, sir. Hey, how are you? Thank you for having me on. Hey, you bet. Uh, happy Friday. Thanks for t- uh, taking the time today. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think we've ever had you on the show before. Uh, before we get into the interview, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what companies were you working for? Oh, uh, well, a number of big Fortune 500 companies that spent half my career in sales, the other half in brand marketing, Coors Brewing Company, Bacardi USA, uh, Pepsi, Gillette. So really big companies where I learned how to run a business and how not to run a business. Um, so that was my professional background, and then ultimately I ended up being an entrepreneur, owning some liquor stores here in Texas. So I like to tell people I've done everything you could do with alcohol, marketed it, sold it, uh, was a retail distributor of it, and I became addicted to it. Ended up spending 31 days in treatment. I uh, reconnected with my guy, Christ Jesus, and got sober, and I now have been sober for eight years. We run a faith-based ministry where we help those who are suffering from drug and alcohol addiction find recovery through the resources that are available. Okay. Um, so in your story, it talks about how, you know, obviously drinking alone is just dangerous, but doing it on an empty stomach is another thing. Talk about yes. the, the the danger there and um, your little study behind this. Yeah, well, what we found is uh, a lot of our young people now are getting drunk and then fasting or withholding food and seeking to stay fit and in shape because there's so much pressure uh, because of social media, celebrities to be fit, to be a certain size. So in that pressure, uh, and then there's the pressure to go out, have a good time, and have uh, so-called fun, as the world describes it. So they are now just withholding food and saving their caloric intake for the drinks that and the alcohol that they will have, which is extremely dangerous and reckless. Now, the alcohol you're talking about, it is, is this beer, hard alcohol, or pretty much all of the above? Pretty much all of the above. Uh, binge drinking is at an all-time high just within the world, not just on our co- uh, college campuses. Because what we do here in the continental United States, instead of dealing with our trauma, our issues, our addictions, we tend to self-medicate. And alcohol, even prescription meds now, are becoming ways that we deal with and cope with the pressures of everyday life. Okay, so, I mean, obviously a good meal is good before drinking. I mean, I think that's stating the obvious there. Um, yeah. W- what have you found with the weather turning? Uh, the weather is starting to get, I'm in Oregon, so the weather is starting to turn in a little bit hotter. Um, I mean, how, how more dangerous is that as the weather gets a little bit warmer versus maybe a little bit cooler weather? Yes, as it warms up from about May so right through New Year's is the highest concentration of drinking, uh, people falling into addiction, people over-consuming and abusing alcohol and drugs. We do find that because there's more parties, there's more activity. You got football season, you got baseball season, you got lots of social activities that ultimately promote drinking. And I want to say this. There are two things that I see as gateway to addiction, as gateway to addiction and over-consuming drugs and alcohol. One is alcohol itself, because if you're over 21, there's literally a liquor store or a place you can buy alcohol anywhere. And then the other is just our addiction to social media and our cell phones, because you are only seeing a person's highlight reel when you see them on social media. 
And there's just so much pressure to have the American dream, which really, truly, when you break it down, is the American nightmare. Do you see kids starting to drink at a younger younger age as time goes on um, because of social media? Yes, and this is a frightening statistic I'm about to give you. Okay. Now our children run into porn at the average age of eight years old. They're consuming porn, alcohol, and drugs at a younger age. This past year, we had our youngest person suffering from addiction that we've ever had in the eight years we've been running our ministry, and he was only 12 years old and was addicted to fentanyl. That's uh, that's pretty sad, especially the, the fentanyl stat. Um, is, yeah. Now, is that, I mean, kids can, I mean, these days get their hands on pretty much anything, but... What what are the processes that you, you found? How are these kids actually getting their hands on this stuff? Are they contacting older d- adults? Are their parents giving it to them? Uh, friends getting it from another friend? How is this, how is this all happening? Well, well, they get it from their dealers. And our, the, the drug dealers these days have become uh, super creative, and they they target you know, areas where kids have disposable income and they give away their products for free. Uh, get a couple of kids, they recruit to work from them. So kids are getting it from their friends at school and then they can order it off social media. They use Snapchat and, and various different social media platforms that parents sometimes aren't even aware to get access to drugs and even sometimes alcohol. So we just, for a lot of us, social media, the television, and our, the phones are raising our children. We are asleep at the wheel and not paying attention to their habits, their behaviors, uh, and, and we wake up and we find out they're suffering from addiction of alcohol, drugs, porn, they're depressed, all of these things, and we just don't know the mechanisms and the ways that they're getting access to things that ultimately lead them into addiction and could lead to their demise. If somebody wants to reach out to your program, Faith-Based Recovery, um, first talk about that a little bit. Yeah, what we do is, and when I fell into addiction myself, my wife and I took us 48 hours to try to figure out what do you do with an addict? What do you do with an alcoholic? So we started our own ministry, and it's called From Beer to the Bible. We can be found at frombeertothebible.com, and we will help you. We will be the conduit to connect you to all of the resources that are out there to help get you sober. And even if you don't have insurance or you don't have money, there are still places and treatment centers that we can get you access to to help you get sober if you really want to be sober. And if somebody wants to contact you, how do they do that? Yes, you can reach us at frombeertothebible.com. That's frombeertothebible.com. Okay, beer to the Bible, correct, dot com? Yes, from beer to the Bible. Dot com. Okay. From beer to the Bible. Dot com. Of course, we're going to post this interview up on our website at 9 a.m. at kpnw.com. Irvin, have a great weekend. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the wake up call. You have a great weekend and uh, good stuff here. All right. God bless you. Thank you for having me. All right. You, you take care.